أبل قاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا ولا سيما بقية الله في العالمين وحجته في الأرضين روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم وغاصبي حقوقهم وجاحدي مناقبهم ومنكري فضائلهم من الآن إلى أبد الآبدين فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي بلغ ما أنزل إليك من ربك يا أيها الرسول بلغ ما أنزل إليك من ربك وإن لم تفعل فما بلغت رسالته والله يعصمك من الناس إن الله لا يهدي القوم الكافرين صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم الشريف السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته When we established this TV station in 2009 about seven years ago I had some English shows back then but it's been many years we haven't had any shows in the English language. I'd always liked and loved to offer shows in English. However, I've been so busy with my shows in Farsi and Arabic that I rarely had any time to conduct shows and uh, deliver speeches in the English language. Hopefully, inshallah, from now on, I'll try to have regular programs in English. And this is a very happy occasion, the occasion of Ghadir. And it's very befitting that we start the English show at this time and at this occasion, this milestone, that uh, after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, after the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam establishes the line of truth and guidance and divine revelation from the line of politics and following the uh, desires of those who sought worldly positions and um, change religion in order to suit their ambitions. Inshallah, with respect to Ghadir, there is so much to discuss and we would like to discuss so much and obviously not all of those topics could be covered. Nonetheless, inshallah, we'll try to offer you some very essential and very important discussions with respect to Ghadir. And inshallah, by the end of these discussions in this month of Dhul Hijjah, this is the year 1437, you will realize, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, that the position of the Shia is so strong and the arguments of imamat based on the narration of Ghadir and tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his khutbah, his sermon delivered at Ghadir is irrefutable, undeniable and inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala I hope that you listen carefully and pay attention because um, my intention is to provide you with a scholarly research and these lectures and I would not suffice on just uh, offering you um, minimal uh, material in this speeches inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala. Ghadir is not the only incident and event in which 
Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam proclaimed uh, the imamat of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam. On many occasions, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam made the proclamation that Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam, the commander of the faithful, he is the imam, he is the leader, he is the successor to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in his life and after his demise and after him the Imams from Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salatu was salam but Ghadir is one of the important occasions it's not the only occasion but is one of the important occasions and we have so many proofs for this claim inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala you will see before I begin my discussion and to offer you my inquiry and research into Ghadir and how Ghadir proves the Imamat of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam in undeniable and irrefutable fashion, I'd like to have a glance, a look at the uh, ideology of Imamat in Khilafat in the opposing faction, in the faction that majority of Muslims today belong to and they call themselves Ahlul Sunnah, the followers of the Sunnah. And what a wrong claim and what a wrongful appellation. People who are so distant from the Sunnah claim to be Ahlul Sunnah. If there's any faction, any congregation in Muslims who are Ahlul Sunnah, who are the followers of Sunnah, they are the Shias of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salatu was salam. There is no congregation, no faction in Islam, no sect within the Islamic realm that follows the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam except the Shias of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam, the followers of the twelve Imams salawatullahi alayhim ajma'in. In these matters I've explained so much in Arabic language and Farsi in my lectures in the last few years that alhamdulillah with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the blessings of my master, the commander of the faithful, Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam, this matter is so abundantly clear to my viewers who watch my channels in English and, and, and Arabic and Farsi. The majority of Muslims today who call themselves Ahlul Sunnah, and they are the followers of Abu Bakr and Omar and Uthman and Aisha, their view with respect to imamat is so ridiculous. With my respect to all my viewers who are not Shia, I respect them. However, the truth must be told, and the truth is not very comfortable. The truth is bitter. Hiding the truth will not change the truth. And hiding the truth has resulted today that Islam has become a perversion, a travesty. Islam has become ISL. Islam has become the tool for those factions who want to rule the Muslim world through bloodshed, through murdering, through killing, through taking hostages. And we have to save Islam. We have to save the name of Islam, the honor of Islam. And that could be only done if we go back to the life of the Nabi, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what Allah revealed upon him and the message that he brought and all the differences that exist today, today amongst Muslims we have to study what is the true uh, message that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered to us so we follow that that message and leave the other ones aside Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the famous narration that has been narrated by the Shia and narrated by the majority congregation said سَتَفْتَرِقُ أُمَّتِي إِلَىٰ ثَلَاثَ وَصَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةَ كُلُّهُمْ فِي النَّارِ إِلَّا فِرْقَةً My Ummah will divide into 73 sects and all of these sects will end up burning in the fire of hell they will be tormented forever and ever in the fire of hell except one congregation, one sect so this is a bell that every Muslim should be alarmed and cautious.
to find that divinely guided that sect that truly follows the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so as to avoid ending up in the fire of hell, in the fire of Jahannam, in the fire of wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the ideology of the majority of Muslims the who call themselves Ahl Sunnah, the followers of Sunnah? And this is a very wrongful name. What is their ideology with respect to imamat and khilafat and succession to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What is their belief with respect to the position of leadership of Muslims after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after that generation, the next generation and the next generation until today? Obviously this is a very important discussion because it's the leader who sets the course of Muslim life. Who is the, the leader today? Who was the leader after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And how we determine the rightful imam from the wrongful imam? How, who, what is the basis of that? My dear viewers, you would be surprised when I say that, when I said that um, the ideology of the majority of Muslims is such a perversion and travesty and so immoral, so wrong, that defies common sense. It's an insult to human intelligence. <laughs> what they have uttered in their books, so many contradictions and so many untenable, indefensible, uh, unjustifiable statements. Let me show you a book by Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal, who is one of the most prominent uh, scholars of the majority sect. Uh, this is his book, Sharh Usul al-Sunnah. Sharh Usul al-Sunnah by Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the Imam of the Hanbali sect. Um, the, the, his, his original text is Usul al-Sunnah, written by himself, by Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal. Here is the, the sect that I, uh, the, the text that I have and PDF version, Usul al-Sunnah, by Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And it's the same text that is, you see in the other, uh, uh, in the previous book, Sharh Usul al-Sunnah, or the exegesis, or explanation, commentary on Usul of Sunnah of Ahmad ibn Hanbal. The commentary is written by Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman al-Jibreen. He is one of the contemporary scholars in Saudi Arabia. One of the Salafist and Wahhabist scholars uh, living uh, in Saudi Arabia. Sharh Usul al-Sunnah li Ahmad ibn Hanbal. What is the ideology of the majority of Muslims with respect to Imam? We, the Shias, believe. Just as the Nabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was infallible, ma'soom, appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise the Imam after him, until the day of Qiyamah, day of judgment, every successor must be divinely guided, divinely appointed, and he must be infallible, so he is the Imam and worthy of following. It has been commonly reported in the Western media that Shias believe the Imam after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the successor to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa has to be from his family. That is wrong. That's not our ideology. That's not our faith, belief. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has many relatives. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his progeny is so widespread, millions of people claim that they are uh, ancestorship to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa that they are descendants of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not enough to be from the bloodline of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is not a requirement. What is required in Shia belief is that the Imam after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be ma'asum, isma, infallibility. And he must be endowed with the knowledge that mankind needs in order to live a prosperous life in this world and in order to be blessed with Allah's pleasure in the hereafter. 
that those two critical requirements, infallibility and to have divine knowledge, the knowledge of everything mankind needs, they, these two qualities require that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoint and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appoint the Imam. Therefore, the Imams after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the successors to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just like the prophethood, the Prophet himself, Nabi himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is not chosen by the people, he is not elected by the people. Likewise, his successor, the Khalifa of Rasul, the Khalifa of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he must be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyways, before we go there, uh, viewers, let's see what uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal says. This is his book, Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal. And we are dealing with the text and the exegesis and commentary of Sheikh Jibreen is not critically important to us. What is the belief of uh, the majority sect with respect to Imama? And on page 95, This is page 95. Uh, statement number 31. والسمع والطاعة للأئمة وأمير المؤمنين البر والفاجر ومن ولي الخلافة واجتمع الناس عليه ورضوا به ومن عليهم, ومن عليهم بالسيف حتى صار خليفة وسمي أمير المؤمنين. أصول الأهل السنة. The principles of faith, the principles of iman, with respect to the followers of Sunnah. What is number 31 principle? Number 31 principle is as sam'u wa ta'a, to listen and to obey to, to the Imams. And wa amir al mu'minin and the commander of the faithful, yani the caliph, meaning the caliph, whoever the caliph is. It is our principle, it is our principle of our iman, our faith, to obey and listen and comply and follow the Imams and the Caliph. The, the Caliph, like Abu Bakr al Baghdadi in um, ISL in Iraq and Syria. Al Barri wal Fajr, regardless of the fact whether this Caliph is Barr, is a decent person, or Fajr, or he's a criminal, or he's a depraved person, <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> you have to follow and listen. Woman wali al khilafa, whoever becomes caliph, and how does a person become caliph? Wajtama an nasu alayhi wa radubi. One one way for a person to become caliph is by consensus. If all Muslims, all people, they agree that such and such a person should be our caliph. And this realistically this never happens. That all people agree on a single person. This will never happen. You know democracy today. You know democracies throughout history. There will never be a time when all people agree that Mr. A or Mr. B or Mr. C should be our leader. Anyways, you say whoever people have consensus upon and agree upon that he should be the Imam. وَمَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِالسَّيْفِ حَتَّى صَارَ خَلِيفَةً وَسُمِّيَ أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And whoever overpowers the Muslims by, by the sword وَمَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِالسَّيْفِ So the first means by which a person becomes caliph is what? Is consensus. People agree. Now do they have a hadith with this respect? Is this a principle from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is there a verse of Quran that indicates that imamat is through choice of people, people's pleasure, people's selection, people's election? Obviously, of course, there is no verse in Quran and there is no hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that imamath is through election, imamath is through consensus of the people. There is nothing. These are just principles they believe in. Otherwise, otherwise the entire faith will crumble because the fa their faith is founded upon the fact, upon, upon the assumption that uh, Abu Bakr's khilafah is a legitimate Khilafah. Umar's Khilafah is legitimate Khilafah. And Abu Bakr was not appointed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 
And they claim that oh, Abu Bakr became caliph through uh, shura, through consultation, and through consensus, which is not true. And then also their faith is founded upon the assumption that Omar is a rightful caliph, and also Omar's Khilafah was not through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's appointment. He became Khalifa because Abu Bakr made them Khalifa. And then Uthman, through a very, very strange and peculiar arrangement that Omar did, he became Khalifa. And then the other caliphs after that, Muawiyah, Yazid, and many other caliphs, Marwan, and Bani Abbas, they either became Khalifa, either through the sword, through overpowering their opponents, or through appointment by the previous Khalifa. So therefore, the, these principles that he mentions, Ahmad ibn Hanbal mentions, or Amir Sayyid Sharif Jurjani mentions, or Kaftazani in Sharh al-Maqasid mention, these principles are not because they're derived from the Hadith or from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are because the various methods through which the caliphs become Khalifa, they have to be legitimate. Otherwise, they, they have, everybody has to become Shia. Because the principle difference between Muslims is what? On the question of succession of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the heir, who is the successor, who is the imam after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِالسَّيْفِ حَتَّى صَارَ خَلِيفَةً وَسُمِّيَ أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Whoever over, overpowers Muslims and vanquishes his opponents through the sword, through brute force, he becomes, and he is called Amir al-Mu'mineen, he claims Khilafa, he becomes Khalifa, and obedience is wajib, is obligatory towards him. And then he mentions many things, was and he is such a person who, them, who could be an honest person, a decent person, or a criminal, a fajr, criminal, a sinister person, a very perverted person. Fajr means a perverted person, a sinful person, a criminal. Even if the caliph is a criminal, a sinister, a sinful person, a perverted person. <laughs> it's obligatory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do not obey Him, you will be held accountable for that and you will be tormented in the Day of Judgment. And He is the Imam, you have to obey Him. He will lead the battles in Jihad. He will, um, such, a, such an Imam, such a leader, such a Caliph, He will be the one who will distribute the booties of the war, and he would be the one who would be collect taxes and sadaqat, and uh, you have to pray Jumu'ah ah and, and the other prayers uh, behind him and following him. He, uh, these are the fatwas of Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal, and these fatwas are not controversial. These matters are a matter of consensus amongst the opponent faction. This is Sharh al Maqasid, the book of Sharh al Maqasid and Theology, written by the famous uh, scholar of the opponent faction, At Taftazani, Mas'ud ibn Umar ibn Abdullah At Taftazani. Taftazani is a very towering figure, a very famous scholar who has many authorships in many different disciplines, including the uh, field of theology, aqaid, beliefs, and also uh, literature, and uh, many other fields, and almost logic, every field that you could imagine within the Islamic realm of studies, he has a very important authorship in that field. In his time, he was one of the most prominent scholars of his time. Sharh al Maqasid, Al Juz al Khamis, the fifth volume. I apologize that I have to offer these texts in Arabic because most of these texts have never been translated into English. So, and if anybody doubts that I translate or I quote these matters um, dishonestly and change the translation, he is free to challenge me 
inshallah my videos will be posted on YouTube and they could post a rebuttal to, to my lectures and to my uh, what I quote from the books and inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have I ask them and request them to indicate which which section they believe that I translated and quoted in a wrongful fashion all these matters that I translate and quote and I do my the best of my effort to translate into English in the most accurate and honest manner possible anyways Sharh al-Maqasid al-Juz al-Khamis Tab'u Alam al-Kutub published by Alam al-Kutub this is the fifth fifth volume published in the year 1998 in this book Page number 233. Tafazani speaks about Imama. وَتَنْعَقِدُ الْإِمَامَةُ بِطُرُقُ Imama is established, Imama of a certain individual. Khilafa of a certain individual. Uh, how a certain individual is the leader of the Muslim Umm. This is established in one of the three following ways. أحدها the first one بيعته أهل الحل والعقد من العلماء والرؤساء ووجوه الناس الذين يتيسر حضورهم من غير اشتراط عدد the بيعه the pledge of allegiance by the people of حل والعقد the people who are حل الحل والعقد الحل والعقد الحل means to open العقد means to put a knot in something to put a knot the people who 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 open a knot and people who put a knot basically the prominent members of the community prominent members of the community that's what he means by ahlul halli wal aqd bay'atu ahlul halli wal aqd the pledge of allegiance by prominent members of the muslim congregation of the muslim community of the muslim ummah who are they ulama wal ru'asa they are scholars and and uh, leaders ru'asa leaders uh, chiefs of uh, tribes and uh, regional uh, prominent individuals in each community and prominent uh, and famous people who whose attendance is possible and, and there is no required number there's no required number and then inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala these matters inshallah in the future we will discuss perhaps in more detail that they have many a time they have indicated that even one person one person pledges allegiance to someone he becomes caliph and it's wajib obligatory for the entire Muslim um to obey that person one person from the Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd the community of prominent individuals in the ummah if one person one politician pledges allegiance to another he becomes caliph and it becomes wajib uh, on the others to obey him so there is no required number there is no required number five people ten people twenty thirty well, prominent members of the community whose attendance is possible if they do bay'ah to a certain individual he becomes caliph therefore technically according to these standards of choosing a caliph and how a person becomes caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is illegitimate according to these standards he's a legitimate uh, caliph of the majority of Muslims because the, stand, the standards that they have established there is no consensus required so, um, uh, even if some individuals who are prominent in the Muslim Ummah pledge allegiance to a certain individual he becomes caliph and these obviously these uh, a case could be made that Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has these qualities من غير اشتراط عدد ولا اتفاق من من اتفاق من في سائر البلاد. There is no required number and it's also not required that the other Muslims in other areas, Muslim in other 
regions, they agree to this bay'ah. As long as one person in Morocco, 10, 20, 30 people do bay'ah to him, or in Syria or in Iraq, people in Indonesia, people in India, people in Pakistan, they do not agree with that bay'ah, it doesn't matter. Their opposition or their agreement is, doesn't make any difference. This person becomes a caliph. Why he says things like that? Because that's how caliphs were made in the old days. That's how caliphs, people become caliphs in the old days. And obviously, if, if uh, Taftazani or Ahmad ibn Hanbal or others, the, other scholars from the majority sect, if they uh, oppose and say this, their caliphate was illegitimate, then they, this, the same argument would be traced all the way to Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr's khilafah, Abu Bakr's imamah, will become questionable. And obviously that's the foundation of their faith and their sect and their congregation is founded upon the assumption that Abu Bakr and Omar and Uthman's Khilafah is legitimate. Therefore, they have to assert these statements which are obviously in defiance to common sense. بَلْ لَوْ لحل لأهل الحل والعقد بواحد مطاع كفت بيعته. Even one person pledges allegiance to uh, from أهل الحل والعقد. One person from the community of حل والعقد, the community of prominent Muslims, and who are they? Scholars, tribal chiefs, and famous people. Even one person from such uh, such a group pledges allegiance to another person, he becomes imam. This is sufficient for his imam. This is the first method. Second method is imami wa wa al amra shura al istikhlaf. The second is that the previous imam appoints a person. Previous caliph, he appoints a successor. Then he becomes caliph. And if he delegates this matter to a shura, to, to a counsel, counseling body, then also this is uh, considered to be a form of successorship. This is the second method. The third method, al-qahr wal istila, overpowering and overwhelming and defeating your opponents by the sword through brute force. If you become caliph, then you become caliph. Then you are the successor of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and obedience to you becomes wajib even if you are a criminal, a perverted person like Yazid, like Muawiyah. فإذا مات الإمام وتصدى للإمامة ما يستجمع شرائتها من غير بيعة واستخلاف وقهر الناس بشوكته إن عقدت الخلافة له وكذا إذا كان فاسقا أو جاهلا على الأظهر Therefore, if an imam dies, passes away and another person who has the qualities of the imam he's Muslim, he's male, he's from Quraysh He's from the tribe of Quraysh. He becomes bali. He proclaims khilafat. But nobody does bay'ah to him. And he was not appointed by the previous imam. However, he overpowers his opponents through brute force. Through the sword, through his army. He defeats all his opponents. In aqadat al-khilafatu lah, he becomes khalifa. وَكَذَا إِذَا كَانَ فَاسِقًا أَوْ جَاهِلًا عَلَى الْأَظْهَرُ Likewise, even if he is, even if he is, but jahil, he's ignorant, he's not a mujtahid, he's ignorant to, the, uh, to Islam and principles of faith and sunnah and sharia. Doesn't matter, he becomes khalifa. Is a kind of fasiqa, if he's a perverted person, he drinks wine, he has a womanizer, he conducts, uh, he commits sins, doesn't matter, he becomes Khalifa. So this is uh, um, the view of our uh, fellow Muslims with respect to Imama and with respect to Khilafa. How does a person become Khalifa in Imam after the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? This is drastically different, diametrically opposed to the Shia view. That the Imam after the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has to be 
like the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he will carry on the duties of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, he has to be like the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ma'asum, infallible. The Imam after him has to be infallible. Like the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he carries the ilm, the knowledge, the guidance to guide mankind through all trials and tribulations. Anything and everything that any individual or all mankind need to, he has the answer for. Likewise, the Imam, because he is the, the guided one. He is the one who will guide mankind. He has to have that knowledge that mankind in each individual in humanity would need in order to live a prosperous life and in order to be blessed in the hereafter. That is why we believe and we have irrefutable evidence from the books of our uh, uh, opposing faction, opposing congregation with respect to the Imamat of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in his successor, successorship to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. What happened in Ghadir in the last year of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam life in the 10th year of his migration to Medina on the way back from Mecca Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed his last Hajj and only Hajj is after his migration before his migration Hijrah did the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perform Hajj or he did not perform Hajj that's a question to be looked into a matter of debate. However, after the Hijrah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed only one Hajj. And that Hajj is called Hijjatul Wida, the Hajj of farewell. Because after that Hajj, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. And, and during that Hajj, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed the Muslims that he would soon die. On the way back from that Hajj, Close to Mecca, there's a station, a locality called Juhfa. Close between Juhfa and Mecca, close to Juhfa, and Juhfa is one of the Mawaqeet, where people when go to Hajj, they can uh, conduct Ihram in Juhfa. Close to Juhfa, there is a body of water called Khum. And that body of water, close to that body of water, uh, Ghadir means b a body of water, a collection of water, of rain water. Called Khum, a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered a sermon that's called Khutbatul Ghadir. Khutbatul Ghadir. And in his Khutbah, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made once again, not the only time, once again, made it abundantly clear that the, the Imams after him will be f from his household and they will be infallible and they will have all the knowledge mankind needs and in that khutbah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made clear that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa sallam is the Imam to be obeyed during his lifetime and after his demise and after his death sallallahu alayhi wa sallam This matter that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered a khutbah in Ghadir, obviously this is undeniable, irrefutable. It has come in so many different sources. Amongst them, the book of Muslim, which is well known as Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih Muslim. Muslim, authored by Muslim Ibn Hajjaj al Qushayri al Nisaburi, Sahih Muslim, Tab'u Darul Fikr, published in year 2010 in Darul Fikr in Beirut, Lebanon. Kibabun in Fadaili Ali ibn Abi Talib in Salamullahi Ali. The virtues and excellent qualities of Sayyidul Muslimin Amirul Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib in Salamullahi Ali. Page 1198. In page number 1200, hadith rakams, the hadith number 6119 from Zayd ibn Arqam. In a lengthy hadith, he says, 
قام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يوما فينا خطيبا بماء يدعى خمة A certain day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam stood and delivered a khutbah, a sermon, in a body of water that's called khum, between Mecca, between Mecca and Medina, between Mecca and Medina, this is Sahih Muslim. Uh, let me show you the English translation of this. So I'm not accused that I mistranslate. The English translation of this uh, khutbah, of this uh, portion that I read to you, I apologize for the delay because I do not have uh, handily available Sahih Muslim. This is the website sunnah.com. Sunnah.com, if you go to this website, go to Sahih Muslim and do a search for khumma, the word khumma. The first, the hadith should come up. Here's the hadith. Zayd said, one day the messenger may peace be upon him in his household, he stood up to deliver a sermon at a watering place. Watering place, a body of water. Belly. Known as Khum, situated between Mecca and Medina. He praised Allah, extolled him, and delivered the sermon. However, where is the sermon? That's the question. The sermon completely. The Nabi wasallam delivered this khutbah at the end of his life. And this khutbah is very important because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this khutbah, he proclaimed to the people and informed them that soon he will die. As you will see in this uh, uh, translation, uh, translation of this hadith in uh, sunnah.com. Let me show you. O oh, people, I am a human being. I am about to receive a messenger, the angel of death, from my Lord. And I, in response to Allah's call, would be good, will bid goodbye to you. But I'm leaving among you two weighty things. The one being the book of Allah, in which there is right guidance and light. And the other one, Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salatu wasalam. So in this khutbah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs them of his death of his demise, of his passing away, that will happen very soon. Where is that khutbah? Um, and the books of hadith of, of the majority of Muslims, if you refer to their books, you will not find this khutbah, this sermon. Although there were so many people present, what, what I mean, I, you will not find the khutbah, I mean the entirety of the khutbah, the entire text of the khutbah. What the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. What did he say with respect to his successorship? If he is informing them that he will soon die, what did he say? Who will succeed him? Who will be the leader after him? These are very important questions. However, if you go to the books, you will not find the entire khutbah. However, a, a, a famous Omari scholar by the name of uh, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, the same person who has written the book of Tariq al-Tabari. Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari, he has a book called Kitab al-Wilaya. He wrote Kitab al-Wilaya with respect to Ghadir, specifically to prove the event of Ghadir. 
and inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala we will talk about this book in future in more detail this is kitab al-tariq al-tabari obviously he has so many books muhammad ibn jarir al-tabari tariq al-tabari the, the history of tabari is not his only authorship he has many many very valuable authorships kitab al-tafsir tahzib al-athar and uh, many other authorships among his authorships is kitab al-wilaya kitab al-wilaya and inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala will show you will prove to you that Tabari in his Kitab al had narrated the entirety of the khutbah the entirety of the khutbah and that khutbah has so many clear and so many uh, uh, unchangeable instructions with respect to the imamat after Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that cannot be change or cannot be interpreted in any other way but to mean the imamat of Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi alayhi and successorship of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and his khilafah after the Nabi salawatullahi alayhi ma wa alayhi this will come inshallah and Shia books obviously the khutbah of Ghadir has come in many many books chief among them kitab al-ihtijaj ihtijaj of Tabarsi from Imam al-Baqiri alayhi salatu was salam that uh, the khutbah of Ghadir from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is kitab al-ihtijaj lil-allama al-tabarsi and al-tabarsi in kitab al-ihtijaj and the book ihtijaj means argument the book of arguments uh, and the book of arguments and the, uh, within the arguments of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he narrates the entire khutbah of Ghadir by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what is narrated by Al-Imam al-Baqiri alayhi salam in the book of Ihtijaj is very similar to what uh, Tabari has narrated on the account of on the uh, authority of Zayd ibn Aqam in Kitab al-Wilayah and inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala if Allah gives us life and we have time in the future we will explain that to you and that will be mentioned in more detail bi-ithnihi tabaraka wa ta'ala Although the famous books of our opposing congregation, the Omari congregation, the, the uh, Al Sihah al Sitta, the six famous books, Kitab al Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Musnad al Darimi, and uh, books such as that, the entirety of Khutbah of Ghadir is not mentioned there. However, enough and sufficient statements from that khutbah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrated that prove the imamat of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam in an irrefutable fashion that cannot be refuted and it is a very clear and very solid evidence and proof uh, that the Shia view with respect to imamat which is the successorship of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is valid and is proved not only from Shia sources but also from Omari sources and inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala we will clearly show this to you many a time the majority Muslims the Omari congregation they try to to deny the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam as the Imam after him and Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salatu wa sallam as Imams after him however there's so much evidence and those who have watched my shows in English and in Arabic and Farsi in the last seven years they know that so much material alhamdulillah rabbil alameen uh, Shias are endowed with, with the blessings of Allah and the, the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that alhamdulillah rabbil alameen the clear is the, the, uh, the reality and the truth is very very clear for anyone who has honesty and who fears God and who wants to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, and leaves his bias aside this, this is al-jami' li-ahkam al-Qur'an lil-Qurtubi kitab al-tafsir this is a book of tafsir, commentary on Quran, by the famous Omari scholar Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Ansari al-Qurtubi. This 
the name of the tafsir is al jamah li ahkam al quran however it's most com more commonly known as tafsir al qurtubi the tafsir of the umari imam al qurtubi al jamah li ahkam al quran this is the first volume tab dar al fikr here in the tafsir of surah al baqarah verse number 30 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة. Remember the time that your Lord declared to Malaika, declared to the angels that I am appointing, I will appoint, I am appointing on earth a caliph. With respect to this verse and the documentary in this verse, he says. السادسة في رد الأحاديث التي احتج بها الإمامية في النص على علي عليه السلام وأن الأمة كفرت بهذا النص وارتدت وخالفت أمر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله عناده. He says the topic number six is his refutations against Shia against Rawafid against the Shia. She has claimed that the Nabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam as Imam after him. And the Ummah irtaddat, the Ummah turned away from the instructions of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and disobeyed the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wants to refute this, this claim of the Shia. He said the first, the first, this first hadith, the Shia, claim is this hadith man kuntu mawlah fa'aliyun alayhi salam mawlah Allah muwali man walah wa adi man ada the first hadith is this hadith hadith this is just one phrase from the sermon of Ghadir this is not the entirety of the sermon of Ghadir just this one phrase because the Omri congregation they do not narrate the entirety of the khutbah in their famous books in their well known books however this portion has been narrated very widely and obviously this is one of the very clear proofs that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declares Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam Imam in a position loftier than Imam and the uh, obedience of uh, and the obliga obligatoriness of obedience with respect to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam a position more exalted and higher and loftier than that and inshallah this will come we'll explain that how th how this statement indicates a position higher than the position of Imamah Inshallah, we will declare that, uh, we'll explain that. He says, this portion has been widely narrated, very frequently narrated. He says, and she has claimed this hadith, and they, on the grounds of this hadith, on the account of this hadith, they uh, advocate the idea that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam is appointed imam by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what is the refutation? His refutation is this. <coughs> والجواب عن الحديث الأول أنه ليس بمتواتر وقد اختلف في صحته وقد تعن فيه أبو داود السجستاني وأبو حاتم الرازي He says that this hadith is not متواتر this, what, what does متواتر mean? متواتر means widely quoted frequently narrated and inshallah there is a very technical definition for الحديث المتواتر We will uh, explain that inshallah either in this episode or in the coming episode in the coming lecture inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala says laysa bi mutawatir this hadith is not mutawatir wa qad ukhtulifa fi sahhati and even the validity of this hadith is disputed shias base their idea of imamat on a hadith that its validity is questionable so you see uh, that this the scholar first he, they, he claimed that this is not mutawatir this is not widely quoted not very well known hadith number one number two if we set aside it's whether it's widely quoted or mutawatir we is the hadith sahih on its own right what's the difference between hadith al sahih and hadith al mutawatir al hadith al sahih even though it may not be widely quoted widely narrated even if it's narrated through one chain of narration all the individuals in the chain of narration, if they are reliable, if they are truthful people, and if they are God-fearing people, 
and there is all those individuals are known and there is no inqita there is no breakdown in the chain of narration all the individuals are known and the chain of narration is well connected there is no breakdown breakdown means if one person narrates from a person who has not he has not met so therefore we know there's one person between the two between the two narrators there has to be another narrator but we do not know therefore such a hadith becomes a weak hadith unreliable hadith these are technical discussions that the scholars of hadith prefer in their books so a, a, a sahih hadith according to them is a hadith that all individual, individuals in chain of narration they are well known and they are truthful and reliable and also these people have met each other uh, such a hadith is sahih hadith and also some of them add that the matin the text of the hadith should not be something that's questionable or that's weird shav shav means something weird questionable something very strange or something very rare that's a shav such a hadith is sahih hadith so first Qurtubi says the hadith is not mutawatir second the hadith is, it's sahha the validity of the hadith the sahha of hadith whether this hadith is sahih whether this hadith is reliable that itself is questionable but therefore the argument that Shias prefer on the account of the hadith of Ghadir is based on a, on a questionable hadith that not everybody agrees that this hadith is sahih but uh, where, and as long as tawatur goes being well known and widely narrated widely quoted that's obviously he negates that and then the other after after if we agree that the hadith is sahih or the hadith is widely quoted then comes the dalala of hadith the meaning of hadith does man kuntu mawla فَعَلِيٌ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ مَوْلَىٰ اللَّهُمُ وَالِمًا وَالَىٰهُ وَعَادِمًا عَادَىٰهُ Does this statement, does this statement indicate imama or it does not indicate imama? And that stage also, they very vehemently try to deny that this hadith indicates the imama in wujub at ta'ah, imamat, and the uh, obligatoriness of obedience to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam. They try to deny that. So, in order for us, to uh, offer you a complete inquiry into hadith of Ghadir and the Shia point of view with respect to hadith of Ghadir these questions must be answered first whether the hadith is sahih or not or whether it's mutawatir or not because if we prove that it's mutawatir the siha is proved anyways because every mutawatir is sahih that is first the whether Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this hadith said these uh, these words or not if that is proved then comes the to, the to prove the meaning of the hadith whether it indicates that uh, that man kuntu mawla whoever's master I am Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam is his master this is the correct meaning of hadith or whoever's lover I am Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam is his lover whether the second is the meaning of the hadith inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala this should be explained in the coming lectures I do not want to have my lecture very lengthy usually my lectures are very lengthy in Farsi and Arabic but I know in the West a lot of people they cannot tolerate lengthy lectures so I suffice on what I've offered so far inshallah in the coming lectures and coming episodes We'll discuss these matters. We have to prove that the hadith of Ghadir is sahih, is valid, and it is mutawatir, undeniable. Undeniable that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said these words. And also what is the meaning of man kuntu mawla, fahada aliyun alayhi salam mawla. Does this indicate that whoever, whoever's master, his, his ruler, who's whose leader I am, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, is his leader, his master, his commander, or it means whoever, uh, wh whoever's lover I am, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, is his lover. <laughs> then, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, this will indicate in the 
we'll discuss these matters in the coming episodes and coming lecture bi idhnihi tabarak wa ta'ala allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wal ana'da'ahum allahumma kun li waliyyika al hujjah ibn al hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala aba'ihi fi hadhi al sa'ah wa fi kulli sa'ah waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajjil farajahum al sharif assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh